Greetings everyone. In today's video, we will be taking a look at the most anticipated 2.0 modifier so far. Flower of Yomi, Izanami. Izanami is an ICE DPS unit. She belongs to the Shinu faction of characters and uses Rage as the resource to execute her skills. Before we get into her kit, let's quickly go over some of her core gameplay mechanics. In battle, Izanami attacks mostly in combination with her summon Hizumi, with each of them having their own instances of damage when attacking. Whenever skill 1, skill 2 or the third sequence of her basic attack are cast, an ice mirror will be generated briefly, shattering moments after, dealing false damage to Izanami. If Izanami is hit by the shattering of ice mirror, she will trigger ice mirror walk, granting herself super armor, deal AOE ice damage to the surrounding targets, and enter the mirror walk state, changing skill 1 and skill 2 into their derivative forms for a brief moment. If Izanami is not hit by the shattering of ice mirror, she will trigger a time fracture if her dodge effect is available and deals massive ice damage to the surrounding targets. Casting the fifth sequence of her basic attack ends the mirror walk state and summon Hizumi to attack the surrounding foes. Her basic attack has five sequences and generate a set amount of rage on hit. Her dodge skill triggers a two seconds time fracture and increase her attack by 10% for 14 seconds. In addition, using a basic attack immediately after it was triggered will counter with a wide horizontal slash, dealing ice damage to the enemies ahead of her. Skill 1, Hygen Frost Dance, quickly advance forward slicing through the locked on targets and activating the effect of Ice Mirror Walk and changing Skill 2 into its variant form. Skill 1's derivative form will summon Hizumi to perform a coordinated attack, dealing massive ice damage to the locked on target. Skill 2, Hygen Bone Chill, allows her to perform two swift blows against the locked on target, while triggering the effect of Ice Mirror Walk changing Skill 1 into its variant form. Skill 2's derivative form, Mirror Bloom Bone Chill, summons Hizum to her side gains super armor while advancing forward like a rogue whirlwind, delivering a flurry of attacks against the locked on target. Skill 3, Hig and Chibiki, have three use cases. On a tap, she summons Hisam to deal light ice damage to the enemies in front of her. When held, she generates a temporary shield to protect herself. While the shield is active, any attacks that would have deal damage to her is negated. She gains 20 rage, and her attack is increased by 20% for 14 seconds. In addition, the attacker is frozen in place for 2.5 seconds, allowing her and Hizumi to launch a counter-attack, dealing massive ice damage to the targets in front of them. This skill can also be used to fake out the self-harm effect of Ice Mirror's Shatter, allowing her to gain the attack buff from it without first being attacked by an enemy. Simply activate skill 3 as the Ice Mirror shatters after using the third sequence of her basic attack. Skill 1 or skill 2 base and she will counter it and grant herself the 20% attack buff. Her ultimate Pathfinder of Yomi summons his Amy and inflict freeze on the surrounding targets before the two delivers a decisive blow to their frozen foes shattering the ice on impact and increasing the team's ice damage by 30% for 12 seconds. While So Wei Kuramitsuha is in the party, their ultimate skill chain will grant the ice modifier with the highest attack the congeal state for 15 seconds. The team's ice damage is increased by 30% for 15 seconds and rage modifier's skill damage is increased by 25% for 12 seconds. When self or a teammate deals crit damage, she gains 3% of her ultimate charge. Now that we have a better understanding of her kit, let's formulate a game plan from what we know so far. We know her skills have two variations, with derivative forms being the strongest forms we can perform. We also know in order to trigger a derivative skill, we need to trigger the effect of Ice Mirror Shatter, 
which can be triggered by the third sequence of her basic attack, skill 1 base and skill 2 base. Izanami also have several self-buff abilities in her kit, such as the 10% attack boost from her dodge skill, the 20% from skill 3's counter-attack, and while using yellow code, you can get up to a 28% attack boost for triggering the effect of Ice Mirror Shatter. When using Izanami's basic attack, get into the habit of animation cancelling the last attack of the fifth sequence. The third sequence is all we need to trigger an Ice Mirror Shatter. The first half of the fifth sequence's damage multiplier is fairly high, and is a good avenue to trigger the effects of Red and Yellow Code's second line. But the final hit is fairly lengthy, and takes an eternity to perform. So we want to cancel that sequence to speed up our rotations. Lastly, since Izanami teams inflicts a lot of freeze, I'll quickly go over this. For everyone who are unaware, or are new to the game, the yellow dots above the enemy's HP bar indicates whether or not it can be CC'd, in this case frozen. Once the dots change into a meter, it means that enemy can no longer be CC'd until that meter has been completely depleted. This is very important to note because her ether codes will allow her to gain 40% more attack and crit rate while attacking frozen targets. With all that in mind, this combo is the one I like to use. Begin the encounter by looping your basic attacks up to the fifth sequence. This will allow you to gain the rage needed to cast your abilities, and while using yellow code, will freeze enemies hit by the shattering of Ice Mirror. You can use the first three sequences and dodge cancel against bosses to avoid activating their ice resistance phase early. By the fourth rotation, you will have gained the 28% attack buff from yellow code or the 20% armor break from red code. Once you have enough rage, basic attack up to the third sequence to trigger the effect of Ice Mirror. Before the Ice Mirror shatters, activate your dodge skill to dodge the effect to gain the 10% attack buff. From there, basic attack up to the third sequence again. And before the Ice Mirror shatters, use skill 3 to counter the effect. From here, the variant forms of skill 1 and 2 will become available. Cast the fully amp skill 2. Loop back to the third sequence of your basic attack to trigger the derivative version of skill 1 and cast it to finish of your rotation. From here, just loop the first five sequence of your basics or the first three and your dodge skill until your skills becomes available. Rinse and repeat. basic attack up to the third sequence to trigger the effect of Ice Mirror. Before the Ice Mirror shatters, activate your dodge skill to dodge the effect, gaining the 10% attack buff. From there, use skill 1, and before the Ice Mirror shatters, use skill 3 to counter the effect. This will counter the self-damage effect and grant you the 20% attack buff from that skill. From here, the variant form of skill 2 will become available. We want to now cast the fully amp skill 2. From here, just loop the first five sequence of your basics until your skills becomes available. Rinse and repeat. When it comes to ether codes, 3 yellow has the highest damage output and is the recommended line for DPS Izanami. This will grant her super armor and damage reduction during ice mirror formation and shattering. Increase damage dealt by Hizami to frozen targets by 15% when mirror walk is triggered. Independent damage is increased by up to 28% for 7 seconds. The shattering of ice mirror will now freeze enemies hit for 2.5 seconds. When inflicting freeze on an enemy already frozen by a teammate, it will not affect the enemy's CC resistance. And lastly, when the last hit of skill 1 or skill 2 hits a frozen target, the attack and crit rate of the outgoing damage is increased by 40%, and the freeze status is removed on hit. 
Three Red is a solid option for support Izanami, and excels at wiping out low-tier mobs and armor breaks. It will increase the damage dealt by Hisami to normal enemies by 15%. When Hisami attacks a normal enemy, if their HP is below 25% of their max HP, they are instantly defeated. If Hisami is summoned by the effect of Mirror Walk, triggered from her basic attacks, inflict up to 20% armor break on enemies hit for 7 seconds. When Mirror Walk's effect is activated, her basic attack will begin from the fifth sequence. Lastly, upon defeating a target, an Ice Flower will be generated and explodes moments later, dealing ice damage to the surrounding targets. Up to four Ice Flowers can exist at any time. Blue Code focuses way too hard on her dodging, so you can safely ignore it. For Functors, the free-to-play, Shikigami Aosaginohi is more than serviceable, providing a 10% crit rate and a 30% crit damage at base. Because this is a free-to-play functor, you'll be able to max transcend it over time if need be, making it even more potent. The four-star options are also usable, but the Gen Zone functor is just too good to pass on, and it has higher base stats, so be sure to pick it up from the DV shop. For those interested in her signature functor, it will grant the following bonuses. When the effect of Mirror Walk is triggered, she will heal for 4% of her HP. Increase the attack of skill 1, skill 2, their variants, and the attacks performed by Hisame while using the second line of blue code by 28%. While in modifier mode, the effect of yellow code's third line will no longer be triggered. Instead, every hit from self will inflict freeze on the target which remains active until she exits modifier mode. When Self hits a frozen target five times, the effect is shattered, dealing 700% ice damage. When obtaining Mirror Walk, heal Self for 4% HP. For 19 seconds after triggering the dodge effect from Mirror Walk's shattering, instantaneous attacks for the next four hits of Mirror Walk skills is increased by 8%. For 19 seconds after blocking Ice Mirror's shattering effect with skill 3, the instantaneous attack for the next four hits of Mirror Walk skills is increased by 8%. When it comes to sigils, the boundary of no return will offer a 10% increase to ice damage. Increase instantaneous crit damage of ice attacks by 15%, and increase skill damage by 15% when a dodge effect or self-healing is triggered. Go ahead and add them to slots 1, 3 and 5. For 2, 4 and 6, Night Owl's Raid fits her playstyle perfectly. It will increase melee damage by 10%, increase skill damage by 5% when a basic attack hits, and lastly increase basic attack damage by 15% when a skill hits. For enchantments, focus on attack, crit rate, Crit damage, elemental bonus damage, and skill damage. Warps gives you the freedom to personalize your characters in a way that best fits your playstyle. As such, the ones I recommend may not be the best ones for you. But if you want my recommendations, they are as follows. For slots one and two, we want two power-up melee, one judge, and one Executioner. For three and four, we want two Telepathize Force Field ones and two EM Flux. If she's in a party with Mitsuha, replace the Telepathize Force Fields with two Unfetters. If you have skill issues, replace the EM Fluxes instead, because the lower your HP gets in battle, the less bonus damage you get from them. For five and six, things get a little more complicated. Running the standard two kinetic mods is always a good option, but you have to keep in mind they only come into play while you're in modifier mode. The most promising one to me seems to be Current Decay. Because we're applying so much frost, and can apply it at will, we have more control over the bonus damage, and it gives a slightly higher damage buff than Shatter. So I would pick two Current Decays as my first option. Our next option would be Ether Shatters, because of how well it synergizes with her kit. Providing more damage against frozen targets. 
But again though, this will only come into play while attacking frozen targets. Since we apply a lot of frost, the target will more often than not be in their CC immune state. Even if you are extremely good at managing the CC meter, you can't really account for the actions of teammates. So in the last two slots, I think having one anger management is going to smooth out your rotations a lot, especially in game modes like Recurring Dreams and Hazard Zone. The final node can be either a Kinetic mod or a Ether Shatter. If you don't mind farming rage at the start of your encounter, you can just replace the anger management with a second Kinetic mod or a second Ether Shatter to cover both frozen enemies and CC immunes. When it comes to teammates, her first choice is going to be our last rate up Kura Mitsuha. Even while using a free to play setup, she's an absolutely top tier support. For the third slot, we just want someone to amplify her damage even more, someone like Hera. Lingguang is a solid choice here as well, assuming she's not locked to Jin Wu. Heimdall is actually a pretty fantastic choice as a third. If you lack both Hera and Ling, seriously guys do not sleep on her. Don't forget, you'll be able to get her functor for free from the Battle Pass shop in the future. So save up those Tianlu VIP cards. If you don't have Mitsuha and still need a decent ice team, you can pair her up with Skadi and A-rank Leviathan. This team apply a lot of freeze even though their skill chain won't benefit Izanami at all. 2.0 Skadi can put out some decent damage so you'll be just fine. If you don't have Skadi, you can swap her out for A-rank Vidar. Izanami will be carrying hard on this team but we get the added benefit of a 30% ice resistance shred from their skill chain. You can swap out A-rank Leviathan in this team for S-rank Leviathan. You lose out on ice power, but you maintain the 30% ice shred in addition to healing and armor breaks from Levy. If none of these team suits your fancy, Arctic Abyss Poseidon and A-rank Hera can work pretty well, battering Izanami's ultimate and reducing the cooldown of her skills with their skill chain. But skill, I don't have a Arctic Abyss Poseidon. Don't worry, sometime in the future, Pass Grudge will get updated and you'll get a free Ice Poseidon from there. Last but not least, you can run her alone side Heimdall and Okuninushi. After casting their skill chain, the team's attack is increased by 1200, and their skill 3's cooldown is reset. If you have the resources, I recommend slotting in two unfetters on them both for a solid uptime on their skill chain. I did an entire video showcasing the DPS of each of these teams I mentioned here. I'll leave a link to it in the pinned comments so you guys can see for yourself how they stack up. In closing, to say Izanami is a powerful modifier would be an understatement. I believe a wise man once said, heaven above and heaven below, I alone am the honored one. Izanami's answer to this statement is simply, challenge accepted.